This is Jupiter Today for the 2nd of February, 2015. Jupiter Today is a daily podcast focusing attention on the dynamic Jupiter system for the purpose of monitoring activity. At zero hours UTC, EO begins the day in quadrant two, heading west. Europa starts the day in quadrant four, heading east. Ganymede starts the day in quadrant two, heading west. And Callisto spends all day long in quadrant one, heading east. Six hours UTC, EO has transited Jupiter and is now in quadrant three, heading west. Europa has just moved behind Jupiter and is now in quadrant one, heading east, and that'll be in quadrant one the rest of the day. 12 hours UTC, EO is at its western elongation and is going to be moving into quadrant four, heading east. Ganymede is transiting Jupiter and is moving into quadrant three, still heading west. By 18 hours UTC, EO is in quadrant four, heading east. Europa still in quadrant one, heading east. And Ganymede now firmly in quadrant three, heading west. And by zero hours UTC tomorrow, EO has moved behind Jupiter and is now in quadrant one, heading east. Europa is very near its eastern elongation. The Apogees and Perigees for today. EO goes through an Apogee at 2021 UTC at a distance between itself and Jupiter of 423,527.6 kilometers. Europa has just passed through a perigee late yesterday and is moving away from Jupiter all day today radially. Ganymede goes through its first perigee that I've reported on. That happens at 10.06 UTC at a distance of 1,067,694.1 kilometers. And Callisto continues to radially move further away from Jupiter, but as you can see, this is beginning to curve, which means it's getting close to its apogee. The orbital ribbons today. So this is the same orbital geometry as you saw on the first slide. Here's Eos orbit and Europa's orbit, Ganymede's orbit, Callisto's orbit. And that's all I've done is connect at the same time the two orbits together. So this is the connection between EO and Europa. And as you can see, it makes what looks like a ribbon that is being twisted. So that's EO and Europa. Here's EO and Ganymede. There's EO and Callisto. And then Europa and Ganymede. And Europa and Callisto. And finally Ganymede and Callisto. And just for fun, I combine them all and put a little bit of color into them. Makes for a very interesting shape. Alright, there are 11 Jupiter satellite events today. At 0 hours 58 minutes UTC, the shadow of EO ingresses. At 105, EO begins its transit of Jupiter. At 
315 UTC, the shadow of EO egresses. At 322, the transit of EO ends. 332, Europa moves into the shadow of Jupiter. At 638 UTC, Europa reappears from behind Jupiter. At 912 UTC, the shadow of Ganymede ingresses. At 938 UTC, the transit of Ganymede begins. 1251, the shadow of Ganymede egresses. At 1316 UTC, the transit of Ganymede ends. And towards the end of the day, at 2215 UTC, Io moves into the shadow of Jupiter. There are five satellite mutual events. This is the largest number of mutual events that I have reported on so far in this podcast. So the first one goes from 132 UTC to 146, and that's when Ganymede eclipses Callisto. It's a 13.7 minute event with an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.353 magnitudes. And Callisto is going to be 82.34 arc seconds from Jupiter. And Ganymede and Callisto are 13.65 arc seconds apart. And on the Google Earth map, this bright point in the center is the location on the Earth where Jupiter appears at the zenith at the time of this event. So this is just showing where on Earth this event will be visible. And it looks like it'll be visible from most of Europe and all of Africa, maybe some of North America, and quite a bit of South America. The next mutual event goes from 329 UTC to 333 UTC, and that's when EO occults Europa. This is a 3.6 minute event with a fairly deep magnitude flux drop of 0.536 magnitudes. But this event only is 2.91 arc seconds from Jupiter, so it's going to be fairly difficult to observe. Visible from some of Europe and some of Africa, a lot of South America, and quite a bit of North America. The third event goes from 753 to 759 UTC when Ganymede is going to occult Europa. This is a 5.7 minute event with an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.465. And this takes place 21.62 arc seconds from Jupiter. Visible from all of North America, a little bit of South America, Hawaii is going to be able to see this fairly well, although Jupiter will be fairly low on the horizon. The fourth mutual event is from 1817 to 1824 UTC, and that's when Ganymede eclipses Io. It's a 7.2 minute event with an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.488 magnitudes. And Io is 68.15 arc seconds from Jupiter. Ganymede and Io are 4.67 arc seconds apart. Visible from all of Asia. Looks like most of Australia. Maybe even some of Africa. And the fifth and final event today just takes a place a couple of minutes later when, as expected, Europa is going to occult Io. That goes from 1832 to 1837 UTC. It's a 5.3 minute event with an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.255 magnitudes. And Io is going to be a nice 64.97 arc seconds from Jupiter. And since this is just a few minutes past the previous event, you can see that all of Asia will see it once again. Quite a bit of Australia, Western Pacific, Indian Ocean, some of Africa.
Okay, 24 hours of Jupiter sky. We're standing on the equator of Jupiter at a longitude of zero degrees. And we're just going to watch the sky pass overhead over the next 24 hours. There's Europa just going into the shadow of Jupiter. And there, pop back in. And is occulting Callisto. We're getting very near Callisto. There's Ganymede going between Jupiter and the Sun, casting a shadow and transiting from Earth's point of view. This perspective allows us to see the relative motions of the moons of Jupiter as they orbit the planet. Eo just went into Jupiter's shadow there. The red spot crosses Jupiter's meridian twice today, first at 9.11 and the second at 19.07 UTC. There was a new image posted on the internet. And there was also a very nice movie. made showing Io and Europa involved in an occultation. Taking some liberty to run the event backwards and forwards for us so we can watch it happen. And there was no new radio data and no new papers. At zero hours UTC, the position of Jupiter on the celestial sphere is a right ascension of 9 hours, 23 minutes, 9.6 seconds, and declination of positive 16 degrees, 19 minutes, 38 seconds. The angular separation between Jupiter and the Sun, as seen from Earth, is 174.457 degrees, and that's 1.132 degrees greater than what it was yesterday. The phase angle is 1.021 degrees, and that's 0 0.208 degrees less than what it was yesterday. The distance between Earth and Jupiter continues to get less and less as we move towards opposition on the 6th of February, just a few days away now. Today the distance is 650,618,183 kilometers, and that's 226,168 kilometers closer than what it was yesterday. And that gives a relative velocity between Earth and Jupiter of 9,423.67 kilometers per hour. And that's 1,958.79 kilometers per hour less than what it was yesterday. The distance between Jupiter and the Sun is 797,469,094 kilometers, and that's 46,582 kilometers greater than what it was yesterday. And that gives a relative velocity between Jupiter and the Sun of 1,940.92 kilometers per hour, and that's 0.33 kilometers per hour slower than what it was yesterday. Central Meridian at zero hours UTC, CM1, 73.96 degrees, 
CM2 125.28 degrees, CM3 32.54 degrees. So please subscribe, and thank you for those who are subscribing. Hope you're enjoying the information that I'm providing. I hope it's interesting, gives a different perspective on the very dynamic Jupiter system. I'd like to hear your comments and questions and suggestions on how to improve this. You can send those and your images to the email shown. And until tomorrow, I bid you peace.